If I was to pick somebody to be the father of my children, AJ is definitely exactly what I would have ordered. He is committed, he's devoted, he's very easy to work with. Becoming a father was a very instinctual thing. I just felt completely at ease with it from the very beginning. I definitely would consider myself a family man. Uh, it's my highest priority um, out of everything. AJ and I have been honest with the children about where they're from, the truth about their father. I don't know that they understand it completely. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> but they do understand which tummy they came from. They don't really consider that there's any difference. There's mummy and there's daddy and one came from daddy's tummy and one came from mummy's tummy. So before getting pregnant, I had the thought that I wanted to document the process of my body's transformation over the next few years and approached an artist whose work I really respected. The opportunity to be involved with a project like this comes along very rarely in a lifetime. Awesome, okay. okay. So if you just want to stand in position while I yeah. get the focus and exposure worked out. I understand that my story may seem confusing to some people. I see it as quite a simple thing. My body was blessed with the ability to provide life. Shoulders around, good. I had the capacity to bear a child and I'm a man and that would be very confronting to a lot of people. Just for the record, this is Sleep Song, all right? And I shall play it. I was christened Vicky Ann. Vicky was such a little tomboy right from the beginning. Vicky would always want to be sort of playing outside, running around the backyard, putting sticks together, playing with mud pies. We were raised going to church twice on Sundays and saying grace and praying about everything. When I got to around 15, 16 and realised I was attracted to women, of course, that became problematic. I think it was very hard for Vicky to come out to her parents. Vicky's parents, um, mum and dad, are very devout um, Christians, a Pentecostal church. My mum was quite distressed and, and upset at the time. Um, uh, over what she considered a, a lifestyle choice. Um, and so I moved out of home sort of shortly thereafter. Obviously, she wasn't happy in her own skin. And I think when you've been in sort of a very strict background and people are telling you, no, no, you can't do this, this is wrong, I think it's just inevitable that you sort of completely go the polar opposite. I think I started taking drugs in my early adult life as a form of escapism and had quite a few scares where I thought, oh God, this is going to kill me if I don't change this. Vicky was on a downhill spiral, so felt that she really needed the security of moving back home. I got back involved with the church and made the decision to start conversion therapy. So essentially in conversion therapy, you are to not act on urges and pray and basically attempt to, you know, be attracted to 
you know, a heterosexual lifestyle. Well, telling somebody that it can be cured by prayer is, is clearly nonsense and can be extremely damaging. It can uh, damage people's self-confidence, increase their distress, cause depression, lead to suicidal ideation. Emotionally, Vicky was going through turmoil, trying to keep it to herself, to please the family, because this is what they wanted for her, but it was killing her. You're kind of in this kind of eternal spiral of negativity, really, because um, you're trying to change some core element of yourself that you have no control <laughs> over and you can't change. So, you know, it's a very, very confusing process. I went to conversion therapy for a number of years and basically at the end of all of that, it didn't work. Art really saved me. It helped me get off drugs and really tidied up my life and gave me a focus and a, and a passion. I also went on to do my masters and become a curator. I met AJ in Melbourne in 2005. Physically, AJ was still presenting as female and a very attractive female, but I was also drawn to AJ's personality. AJ was very dynamic and, and interesting, which drew me in. You'd have to be drawn into that. I was pretty quickly uh, smitten <laughs> and wanted to uh, just spend every waking second with her. I asked AJ to marry me because I was in love with AJ. I wanted to spend my life with AJ. Confirm their love and strength of commitment to each other. This bond will continue to strengthen and grow through their years together. So it took a few years, but my parents did come around. When I first told them that Zoo and I were having a commitment ceremony, we're not overly thrilled. It was just lovely to see AJ get walked down the aisle by her dad and AJ's mum was instrumental in helping make the wedding dress and it was stunning. So when I saw AJ in that wedding dress, I had no idea what was going on for AJ because there were no signs for me. I felt like I was marrying this incredibly stunning woman. I was trying to, I guess, do the elegant lady thing. Got to give it a good go, you know? Like, it's the last few are. Is this... <laughs> if you're going to go out, go out with a bang, you know? So around the time of my wedding, or shortly thereafter, I started to question my gender and think that I might be a man. And I think especially because I'd gone through the whole conversion therapy thing of, no, you, you're not gay, and I'd spent years trying to convince myself of that. I think I was just deeply confused. It's like you sort of open a door and take a peek and then you go, oh God. <laughs> but the door's already open, you can't close it again. For obvious reasons, AJ kept a lot of things hidden from me initially. Um, it would be a hard thing to suddenly discuss with your partner. I certainly didn't just wake up one day and, and think I was a man. It was more questioning myself when I found particular things making me feel more comfortable. I started using fake facial hair. And when I put it on and I looked in the mirror, there was such a deep sense of relief and that it, it should have always been there. And, and I actually teared up because I was just so relieved to feel like it was there. It's just this mountain of questions and fears and 
you're taken aback. You think, oh, can I, can I do this? Am I strong enough to, to walk through this? Am I ever going to find peace? Maybe it's all just too hard. Maybe I should just opt out. I think the scariest thing is telling people that you love. When AJ told me that he felt he was male, I don't think I was shocked. I think I was a little bit confused initially because I didn't understand it. Did you bring them with you? Yeah, in the car. I think my biggest reaction would have been concern. Yeah. Concern yeah. on a completely selfish level. Concern for what that meant for who I was as a person. Might has to have to take their pot in for them of food yeah. and I had always identified primarily as lesbian. So I now had to dig deep and figure out what that meant. For me, it's about the person that you love. So that was how I was able to accept it. AJ started to bind, started to dress in more masculine clothes, getting masculine haircuts, or what he felt made him feel more masculine. I think his darkest times came when he knew that he was transgender and had decided to start the journey, um, but there were a lot of obstacles in his way. When I started to understand that I was a man, my dysphoria with my physical body grew. Dysphoria is incredible mental anguish of your body not fitting you. And reflecting back to childhood, do you think there were any indicators at that stage that you had a degree of gender variance? Or that something I first saw AJ in June 2010, and he came with um, a diagnosis of gender dysphoria, and he wanted to medically transition. So he came to me for approval to go on hormones and uh, to have chest surgery. So. What I'd really AJ's story is not uncommon. I think if he hadn't transitioned, then there is a very strong likelihood that he would have taken his own life. Even though I was still in the midst of working out who I was and what I needed to do, myself and Zoo were very committed to having a family. It never deterred me with AJ telling me these things. I still wanted the family with AJ. I love AJ, I still do love AJ. So why should it matter what that person looks like or who that person identifies as? Zoo had our first child. When Jasper was born, I'm very much his father and have viewed myself that way since preconception. During the birth of our first child, there were complications. So when it came time to think about our second child, uh, it really seemed a better option for me to have that child. I love being a dad and the thought that I could, you know, uh, create this beautiful sibling for my eldest child. <laughs> <laughs> AJ had made a mental transition to male, but because we wanted this child, he held off his physical transition. Um, I ask myself questions like, well, how do I feel when someone says she? So I was a little concerned to tell my gender specialist, Fintan Hart, that I planned to have a child. I was concerned that it would be misconstrued as, as a desire to be a woman. Like I kind of wanted to squirm out of my skin. It sort of felt painful. In my opinion, there's no reason why AJ shouldn't have a child if he chooses to, and he did. My concerns in relation to the pregnancy were whether his depressive symptoms would resurface when he was uh, confronted with his female anatomy and physiology. Prior to becoming pregnant, he was addressed by family and friends with male pronouns, and he was seen as, as male, uh, and clearly that was going to change. I was really concerned for AJ whilst he was pregnant because 
I knew he had such strong dysphoria and that it caused a lot of mental anguish. But somehow I believe he found some inner strength and he just dealt with things. I think because of my fine arts background, it really led to me thinking about documenting my transition in some way. So we decided to call the project Inverto. <laughs> Alison and I selected the back lane near her house to do a lot of the shoots. Okay. So if you just want to stand in position while I get the focus and exposure worked out. So we met once a month for around two years, starting with when AJ first fell pregnant. We took a number of photos in varying forms of, of clothing and, and uh, topless as well. And pre-surgery, the topless ones were really highly confronting for me to uh, participate in. Yep, that's good. And move to the right a tiny bit. Until I could physically transition, it was more of a mental leap for people to understand. Seeing a pregnant female body it becomes almost impossible for people to understand that you're actually a man. There are certain phases where I could see that he was really uncomfortable in his body and I had to keep reminding him to take a deep breath and relax. I think it's a story that he felt should be told. I think he also did it for him, to help him through his journey. You need a reason to hold on and keep doing what you're doing. And I think Inverto gave him that. It was his light at the end of the tunnel, but it was the ladder that held him in place once he got there. AJ wanted the extra support in the medical system because he's not, you know, the mainstream, typical kind of pregnant person. <laughs> yeah. This is the first time I'd ever worked with someone in midwifery that was transgender. So it was really challenging at first having to use the correct pronouns because you're always just saying she and her and pregnant woman. So I'd never had to say he or pregnant person before. Before he could pass as a man, becoming pregnant meant that his body went even further the other way and how challenging that must have been. I was feeling very invisible at that time and how sad I was and how distressed I was that it felt that even people close to me who knew who I was couldn't see through the exterior anymore. Regardless of what clothes you wear or anything else, um, they start seeing this quintessential female form. I think in total it was about 40 hours from beginning of pre-labor to the baby being born and AJ was awesome. I was just telling him to keep pushing as hard as he could and telling him when he'd done it really well and to just keep going and just making sure he really had a chance to actually get the baby out as naturally as possible which is what he really wanted. First meeting Luca when she was born, as any parent will tell you, is the greatest joy in the entire world. Meeting a new little life, and especially having felt that life inside me. And I feel privileged to have been able to create a life. I mean, how amazing is that? I mean, anyone that's given birth will, will bear witness to the fact that it's a, it's a miracle. It was about seven or eight months after I'd birthed Luca that I started my hormone replacement therapy. Uh, <laughs> I am a new man. Finally. Done, it's done. Yeah, yeah, it was fine. I was so over the moon excited when I had my first testosterone injection. Ah, uh, how do you feel? Excited. I can't, I'm a bit just, just Testosterone is running through your veins right now. He had waited patiently and selflessly for this moment. So when he received that, he was in such a, a magical place. 
in the first few months, you start to feel your voice break and start to deepen. The testosterone sort of is putting you through a male puberty. My acne is still there. It's cleared up a little bit. Um, my chin hair is going pretty well. When you're 14 and going through puberty, everybody's going through puberty, whereas he was dealing with it all on his own. Um, I think it's been hard on his body. There's been, you know, there's been days where it's been tough for him. My voice has um, started to drop again. <clears throat> and it's like <clears throat> gravelly and weird and strange at the bottom. When he first started transitioning, he was like, this is going to happen, and this is going to happen, and this is going to And then just to see it actually happen as he went through the journey, um, you could tell how pleased he was with it. I know that AJ's parents feel that it's just a phase that he's going through. Yeah, I think that that's how they're being able to accept um, the transition and in the hope that one day uh, AJ will realise that it's not for him. I truly feel sorry for my mum and dad. I think it's particularly hard for parents, especially when you know I transitioned late in life. You know, here's their little girl who they've seen grow up and they've loved infinitely. And I think a lot of parents go through a grieving process where they feel they've lost the child they knew, which I completely understand. And I think they're allowed to have that reaction and they need to, to feel that and work through it. I have faith in them. I have faith that they will um, accept this. They love AJ. Doing some with the finger peels so it hasn't released. Yeah? I decided to get into martial arts after I saw a friend get assaulted and, and I felt quite helpless. From here, chock the hip that you wish to go over and throw. <laughs> okay, opens us up for a groin strike if we're standing. We have been running as a club for around nine years. I joined in at some point because I realised AJ was overworked and needed some assistance, so I became an instructor and, and jumped into the business as well. Please don't. Please, I've got a family. Please. Shit. My reputation assistance. was as a female trainer, and so I was thinking, oh, my God, you know, are my female students going to feel portrayed? So making sure when we, we go for the take, we bring the fingers over, not under. When I told the student body, the overwhelming good. Good. feeling was one of support. Chuck the hip. Yeah, good. Follow it. Yeah, it really restores your faith in humanity. Yeah. Zoo and I broke up when I was transitioning, but we didn't break up because of it. It was one of the hardest things I've ever done. We realised we were wanting very different things out of life. Although we do raise our children together and run our business together, there's other aspects of our lives that were very, very different and not necessarily compatible anymore. Zoo and I are the absolute closest of friends. We support each other 100%. The kids will get Dad over for a sleepover. We'll go out for dinner together. We might take the kids on an adventure. <laughs> Hello. The same as many families do. It's just that we live in different houses, really. Yes. Thank you. Did you have a good day? Yes. Yes. Our children see AJ as their father. There's no question in their mind that he could be anything else. He just is. Eat some noodles and some carrots for yeah, some rubber. That's probably my greatest fear is that my children will bear the brunt of uh, people's ignorance. <laughs> That's just so silly. We do believe our children are capable of understanding the truth and accepting it. A special ring. Does it make you go extra fast? Yes. Children have very rich fantasy lives. Frogs turn into princes, 
pumpkins turn into coaches and a woman turning into a man and vice versa is literally child's play. So it really depends on how adults and um, handle the situation and how the disclosure is, is managed. I was a little apprehensive about the opening night of Inverto, knowing that, you know, I'd have all these photos up of me and it would be projected onto a huge wall to be viewed by passing traffic. And it was interesting to see people's reactions. I think it was quite confronting and challenging for some people. There was a few people that had to sort of walk out and come back a bit later. I think the thing that was hardest for people to get their heads around was the idea that this person had been pregnant and was now a man. One of the things I love about photography is its capacity to compress time and to very succinctly give a vast, huge story all at once. Photographs are kind of like a time machine. Part of the privilege of doing this project was having the opportunity to share that journey with AJ. Jess, would you want to pick some garlic? I have never seen a garlic that big. That's one piece of garlic. I think that might be a bit too big for us. Maybe. I thought if I can't stand up and be proud of who I am and not feel like I need to be ashamed or, or hide, you know, how am I ever going to teach my children to be proud of who they are? I think there's already one in there. He's been dealt quite a lot of blows that many of us won't have to experience. And I think it's testament to him that he's come through that not just as a happy person, but as a better person. I've had a really interesting history with mirrors. <laughs> I avoided them quite strongly. And after my body started to become more myself, I couldn't stop looking in the mirror. <laughs> felt very vain. <laughs> and so I love looking in the mirror now. <laughs> and it's just nice to see the person looking back at me is me and, it, and have a connection with that person that, that I'm actually seeing myself. It's an awesome feeling. Thank you.